after a very long interruption in my life, I don't have a go-to medium today that I feel very comfortable with and that I'm very excited about. I was talking about this to my coach when he suggested that I try egg tempera. It's a medium that I knew very little about, I gave it a try and I found it absolutely fascinating. Today I'm going to share my discoveries with you from the day I received my pigments to my very first egg tempera painting. So if you're new to the medium, just stick around and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know if you want to give it a try yourself. I just wanted to say a big welcome to everyone who joined since my last video. I'm so happy that you want to share my artistic journey. So big welcome, welcome to if it's your first time here. My name is Julie and today it's going to be all about egg tempera and I hope that you find this video inspiring. For me, it was an interesting medium even before I gave it a try because to make egg tempera, you have to start with your pigments. It's a kind of paint that you make yourself and personally, it's something that I really enjoy to be close to the materials. And I just, there is something about pigment bottles that I just find very, well, they're just pretty. I find it inspiring and it makes me happy to work with them, which is an important part of enjoying a medium for me. But there are also other properties about egg tempera that I love. You can get very rich and vibrant colors working from the pigments directly. You have complete control of your colors because, again, you're working from the pigments, so nothing is mixed that you don't want to. It's more substantial than watercolor and it has a very smooth feel, almost silky when you apply it. And personally, I find it easier to work with than gouache because it doesn't reactivate the same way gouache does and you can add a lot of layers. I also find the colors I can achieve a lot more vibrant than gouache and very important for me, it doesn't require any solvents and it can be thinned and cleaned with water. But contrary to watercolor and gouache paintings, egg temperas actually get water resistant with time. It's a bit like when you have egg yolk on the side of a plate and you don't clean it right away and it gets very hard and you can't dilute it with water anymore. It's the same process. An egg tempera painting cures with time and it becomes water resistant, which makes it a very durable medium. It's a very ancient way of painting that was very commonly used before the Renaissance, before oil paint became dominant. So at the time you had to make all of your paint yourself and it is still the case with egg tempera because it's made from egg yolk and it's not something that can be made in advance and put into a tube and that you can purchase because it would go bad. So you have to make it yourself from scratch, but it's actually a very easy process. Basically to make paint, any kind of paint, you need two things. First, pigment. It's the element that is going to stain or sit on the surface that you're painting. And next, you need a binder. That's the element that is going to hold your pigments together and allow them to stay on the surface that you're painting. If you were to just apply pigments on something, they wouldn't stay there in their powder form. All paint is made that way, even color pencils. And what makes medium different from another is mostly the kind of binder that is used. Egg tempera is probably the easiest paint to make at home because all you need for your binder is an egg yolk. Since I already have eggs at home, all I needed to purchase to get started was pigments and I ordered mine from the brand Sennelier. These are pure pigments, the same that Sennelier uses in their paint and they are sold in powdered form. One thing to know about powdered pigments is that you have to be careful when working with them because some pigments can be toxic. I don't have any dangerous pigments here, but all pigments in their powdered form are very volatile, so it can be very irritating for your lungs. And it's commonly advised to wear a respirator when you're working from powdered pigments, just to be safe. To avoid it, you can mix your pigments with a little bit of water to form a paste, and then you can work from this paste 
when you're painting to not have to wear a respirator all the time. It's a process that I didn't do right away, but I'll show you that a bit later in the video. I made my first experiment in egg tempera with a pigment called Caput Mortum, which is made from the same pigment as Venetian Red, actually. And I was very lucky because it ended up being the easiest pigment for me to mix with my egg yolk. First, I made my binder with a regular egg that I had in the fridge. Um, the kind of egg doesn't matter at all. This one is a free range egg because it's just what I happen to have, but it really doesn't matter. I separated the yolk from the white. Then I gently rolled the yolk on a paper towel to remove the white parts that stick to it. And I poked it to get the egg yolk content out of the membrane and to be able to discard the membrane and all of the white residue. Then I mixed it with about an equal amount of water. I didn't wait or anything um, for the egg to water ratio of the binder. You can find different advices and recipes online. Um, the most common one and the one I decided to go with was to have as much egg yolk as I had water and I'm using demineralized water here. I've seen advised online to use, how is it called? Um, when you have an alambic? Distilled water, uh, but I couldn't find it very easily around me. So this is just demineralized water, but I think if you just want to mess around, you can just use regular water from the tap. It's not very important, it becomes more important as you make painting that you want to last. So I'm mixing half egg yolk and half demineralized water and this will be my binder or my medium that I'm going to mix with pigments. For the mixing, I use a piece of glass as my mixing surface. You can use a glass palette or just a scrap piece of glass from an old frame or refurbished fridge shelf for example. This is just the underside of a small IKEA table that I have and I'm having a white sheet of paper underneath just to have a white background. With a palette knife I took a little bit of the pigment and I put it on my palette. Then I added an equal volume of binder. Again, I'm not measuring very precisely here. I'm not waiting or anything, just trying to have an equal volume of each of those things. And I'm mixing it directly on my palette with my knife until I feel like it's nice and consistent. From later experiments, I know that some pigments can be more difficult to mix, but this one was very easy and I enjoyed the process right away. And then you have it, it's paint! You can use water to thin it out and you can get it to a very thin texture if that's what you want. Or you can have it very close to watercolor if that's what you want or a little bit more consistent. And yeah, you can just add as much water to the mixture as you want and it's your paint. What really matters with this medium is the egg to pigment ratio and if this is right, your paint is going to stay on the surface no matter how much water you add. So as I was telling you, you should wear a respirator when working from pigment powders. I've seen people not using it, but I'm just a beginner with egg tempera and I'm filming YouTube videos, so I don't want to give unsafe advice, so respirator. Um, but it's not something that I really enjoy painting with. So to avoid it, I decided to make pigment pastes. It's something I took from Kushadler. She has a very extensive book about egg tempera and I'm using her advice here. I'm going to put the title of the book in the description below if you want to check it out after the video. So a pigment paste is a mix of pigments and water and you can store it indefinitely unless it grows mold. So once you have made your pigments into a paste, it should have a toothpaste consistency, but it's not very important because you can even just let it dry out and it will become like a dried out mud if you want. 
So more compact than your powdered pigment and then you can just add water to it again and get your paste ready to work with. So to make it, I'm mixing my pigments with a little bit of water. It's the same demineralized water that I used for my binder earlier. And I'm mixing small amounts in small glass containers that I bought off Amazon. <laughs> and I labeled them with the name of my pigments because I don't want to forget what's inside. And I can't just recognize my pigments without the name on it. Another advantage for me to work from pigment pastes is that my containers for the pastes are a lot smaller than the Sennelier pot jars that I bought my pigments in. So I put all of my tiny glass jars in a plastic tray and it's, it makes me a nice small and tidy palette to work with. At this point, I was still figuring out how to work with egg tempera and what helped me a lot to get to know my pigments was to paint a lot of color charts. Um, it's been a very long project and I spent a lot of time doing it, but I, I want to make a separate video about it. So if you're curious to know what I did exactly and how to paint color charts, in egg tempera to get to know your pigments, you can subscribe and this should be my next video or the one right after the next one. Today I want to jump straight into my first egg tempera painting and it's the painting to this day that I'm the most proud of. So I didn't think too hard about what I was going to paint for my first egg tempera painting, but I happened to be on um, Florent Farge Florent Farges. It's weird for me to speak French and English at the same time. Um, the Discord of Florent Farge and he has a painting challenge section on his Discord and there was a painting challenge going on that was to paint fire or flame or candle or light bulb or, or something and I got inspired. So I found a nice candle reference from Unsplash and I decided to paint it in egg tempera. So I used a drawing paper to make a drawing of this simple candle and candle holder. Then I transferred it to heavy watercolor paper. The paper that I'm using here is a 600 GSM cotton watercolor paper from Clairefontaine. Again, you'll have the reference in the description if you want to know. I chose the heaviest I could find because I've seen that egg tempera shouldn't be applied on a flexible surface. Ideally, it should be a panel with traditional gesso, but it's really not something that I want to invest in right now. And if you use paper, you don't have to use gesso or anything, your tempera can just... It works. So I made a compromise and I just used the heaviest watercolor paper that I could find. As I said, I had been making a lot of color charts, um, but despite all of my experiments, I didn't really know how to approach this painting. So my first intention was to block in the major elements with color and values close to what I wanted and I started with the background going around the candle which was probably more tedious than it has to be. If I started this painting over I think what I would do is to paint all of my background blue and then transfer my drawing and add my candle on top of that but it's just not something that I thought about for this painting. So I struggled a bit at the start, but this is where I found what I like the most about egg tempera, is that I find it very forgiving, actually. It's not its reputation to be a forgiving medium, but... And it's because it's a paint type that dries very quickly, probably even quicker than gouache. So it's not a paint that you can really mix with, not the way that you mix oils, for example. It's very different, so it, it can feel unforgiving, but actually, personally, for my own painting and drawing style, I found it very forgiving because, contrary to gouache, you, 
you can add a lot of layers and where gouache gets muddier and muddier and I can never make it do what I want. Here I was able to glaze and to change some of my colors by glazing with another pigment and even smooth some areas by going over them with almost transparent layers very slowly and I found this process very natural for me. It was like building my image in a very slow and progressive way. And the final result comes from a lot of small adjustments rather than a direct a la prima approach. So here it is, my final painting. I'm very happy about it and I'm very excited to keep experimenting with egg tempera. I think my next project is going to be um, a master study of a painting that I know to be tempera. Yeah, it's a very simple image, but I really enjoyed the process and I actually enjoy what it looks like now, which is more than I can say about any gouache painting that I've done. So I hope that I made you want to try it if you didn't know about egg tempera. I will add the references of everything I mention or use in this video to the description if you want to check it out. I will also put a few links to a few useful resources for egg tempera since it's really not a very well known medium. If I forget anything just ask in the comments and I will do my best to help you. Let me know in the comments too if you already gave it a try and how it turned out. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Stay creative and I will see you in the next one.